What's up? This is Carlos again, starting our next part of our tutorial. Today's going to be pin wash day. Everybody likes pin wash day. Can't skip pin wash day. One of the things that uh, I've been thinking about, well, let's talk about this first. I added a little bit of uh, mineral spirits or uh, odorless thinner into the into the tray. I'm going to be adding a little bit of oil wash and I'm going to eyeball it and I'm going to make sure that it's the color that I want and the thickness that I want. Um, you see here I've got two trays. One of them is going to have the oil and then I'm just going to slowly add it from the... Oh, no, I guess I'm just going to go straight from the bottle. Point being, I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I want it to be a little thicker, a little darker. And um, yeah, that. So I had something on my mind and this is just a like a general thought because in the past I've noticed people and I've I'm really surprised at how um, how well people have replicated the the scheme that I first hammered out. Probably the uh, one of the main reasons why anybody knows that I exist is those early videos about the ultramarines. And it's been out for a few years now, and throughout the years, there's been a few people, more than a few, and uh, no, maybe just a few, I don't know, like less than 10, but more than more than five people who I've seen who directly, uh, you know, uh, mentioned me. And then I look at the Marines, I'm like, wow, that's very, very similar, in some cases better than what I did. So I, I don't know if it's a testimony to... Um, and the problem is, here's one of the problems, is that like I put like a really crappy highlight on one of the back of the boots. And I've seen, <laughs> I've seen that terrible highlight replicated multiple times. And I'm like, oh gosh, I wish I could wish I could take that one back. But, you know, I like I said, it's flattering. But on the other hand, you know, one of the reasons why I did this or why I do this is because there's lots of techniques that are either misunderstood, underrepresented, or just kind of... Uh, not not known about unknown did i say that already this is meant to be inspirational that's the that's the uh the main genesis and and you know i want to be the wind beneath people's wings so like when you see this stuff i hope that what people are doing is they're taking it and they're kind of making it their own and they're expanding things and when you try new stuff you can also look at other things that other people are doing and incorporate that too. And then eventually what we want to do is we want to, we want to break away from what people do or what we see. And then we want to start to forge our own road, which I know is completely counterintuitive. And you're probably thinking, Carlos, you ridiculous person. Surely, why would anybody even care? But you know, I don't know. I mean, that's one of the things that uh, the longer I do this, the less um, I want to, like, I still watch videos. I still check in, but on the whole, I, I avoided them for a long time because I felt like eventually I was just going to end up being like a little Ben Comets clone. And that's not necessarily that I want. He's a great guy. I love the way he paints. Uh, he's actually sent me a private message or two. Uh, when I initiate it, but the point is is that he's not too big for his britches and he's like a genuine person I think how would I know and um, but I didn't want to end up becoming uh, You know one of his little little babies um, Because I, I think that my painting is already probably unduly influenced by him, but uh, you know, that's one of the things that I I'm striving for and I hope that people who watch these are striving for that too. So uh, now that I've really, really insulted everybody and put everybody off, let's have a look. So this pin wash, the purpose of it is to draw out detail, is to make it even more uh, highlighted. And we do that by adding relief to all these raised details. The whole point of this is that you're going to be able to see this model at an arm's length and see the all the relief lines all the rivets all the turrets everything very clearly and it's going to make that contrast even higher so we've taken our contrast and now we're boosting it again that's the whole point of this so i, hope, uh, I mean this is pretty so, much all this is, anyhow is a few um, minutes of this and, and the the point of the gloss was you can see it kind of aids in the flow there's still quite a bit of texture like if you look closely um 
the preview I'm looking at is kind of a low quality, but I'm sure in 4K when you see it, um, if you are looking at it in 4K, the there's like a little bit of a texture on top of that um, that hatch or that bay on the front of the model, and that kind of appears elsewhere. But the slick surface provided by the gloss should increase the flow. Not necessary. You can do this over satin. You can do it over matte. Differences being is that it's going to be a little bit easier to clean up on gloss. So when you put the oil wash over it, and it's on a gloss surface, theoretically. Uh, what you want to do is you're going to clean it away and almost nothing's going to be left whereas on a satin or a matte surface you're going to have a little bit of staining not a huge amount but a little bit so just understand that and if you experiment with that on your own models you will see what I'm talking about and one of the reasons why we do our um, our hello why we do our oil paint rendering onto a matte surface is because of the toothiness of the matte. The matte texture, if you looked at it at a microscopic level, is incredibly rough. Lots of peaks, lots of valleys, whereas the gloss and the satin tend to be more smooth. So that's why when you're doing the oil paint rendering over the surface and you do it over a matte covering, you're going to get a lot more of the oil remaining on the surface of the model in the same way. But opposite, when we do this over gloss, it's going to be simple or easy for us to clean it up. And then you'll see that when we take it away, we're not going to have as much left behind. So that's all I'm doing. And you'll see that uh, wherever there's a nook or a cranny, all nooks and crannies are going to be um, painted with this paint. A note on the paint, this particular paint is a sepia color paint. It's kind of like a really, really dark yellow or brown or something. And you can see that when it dries, it's not quite the color that I thought it was. When the, the first time I used it and I really fell in love with it is when I was using it on like a tiny little 172nd Tiger model, which is a type of tank. <clears throat> and I really, I liked the way it looked. It was incredibly dark, but it's not black. So that's one of the things like you could do this with a, with a black. The thing is, is like it's going to have this like really uh, intense kind of like ink a cartoon ink drawing look to it so that's up to you we're still gonna have a, a very uh, probably not quite as realistic finish using this but I mean most people in the armor community do this um, a lot of people basically lots of scale modelers do this um, uh, with to great effect and it is a great way of enhancing detail and increasing contrast so that is why we do it and that's you know this is where uh, one of the one of the channels that I really like it's called the Toronto Barbican, and they're just uh, some Canadian dudes. And they you know one of the guys who paints a lot on that channel his name is Dave Forrest. He he's always uh, extolling the virtues of this particular stage of the model. And I agree. Like even if it looks kind of like maybe the contrast isn't where you want it or things aren't quite going the way you want. When you hit it with a wash, even on a low contrasted model, you're still going to get that super nice relief look of all those details and, and, and uh, panel lines filling up with the oil paint. And you'll see what I'm talking about. You can see it right now on the Land Raider. You see what it's doing. And man, these models, I heard somebody say one time, like when you're painting a 135th tank, it's like it grows while you're painting it. Well, the same thing happens with this thing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a massive model. And like, as I was painting, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like, I still have another entire uh, side to go. So it's a lot of fun, but it's also, you know, you have to, you have to be in the right mindset. You also have to carve out enough time to do this kind of stuff. Uh, be aware that when you're using these materials, you're going to, it's going to take a little bit of time. So yeah, plan, plan accordingly. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to uh, let you guys uh, watch the rest of this process. Um, I appreciate everybody who is uh, newly joined. I'm glad that there are people who are still returning and finding stuff that's useful. I would really like to see, uh, as you guys paint stuff, you know, maybe send me links, uh, show me what your Instagram is. Uh, I added, um, I'm adding people or I want to add people. So please let me know and I will talk to you guys very soon.